Mm. Uh, see, what was the other one? The summon swarm or summon plague. Plague. Ah, uh, yes. Insect Plague. Here we go. Cast the time one round. Range long. 400 feet plus 40 per level. Uh, one swarm of wasps per three levels, each of which must be adjacent to at least one other swarm. Duration one minute per level. You summon a number of swarms of wasps, one per three levels, to a maximum of six swarms at 18th level. The swarms must be summons that each one is adjacent to uh, at least one other swarm. That is, the swarms must fill one contiguous area. You may summon the wasps' swarms that they share the area of other creatures. Each swarm attacks any creature, blah, blah. Yeah, so basically you get three swarms. Well, one swarm per three levels. So. Okay. You're level two, so that would give you one swarm. So you can have one swarm, or you can have one swarm. I'll have one swarm. Sounds like fun. Where would you like the swarm? Hold on, I'm not actually casting the swarm. Oh, okay. Because I only have one charge of swarm, so after You're... that it's gone, right? Well, so you I can get staff re recharged. Yeah, and then you can recharge the staff when you're preparing spells. Each spell you would have prepared is one charge for the staff. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, uh, I'll cast the plague against the uh, lizard then. Um, are you sure you want to do that? I don't see why not. All righty. That's going to last for at least two rounds. Okay. Where are you summoning it? On the lizard. Alrighty, it's like just right on top of it? Just right on top of it. Cool. Out of thin air, a buzzing swarm of wasps appears and begins to stab the lizard relentlessly. And I'll just back out. Yeah, Very good here. play. Hey, you stay there. No, yeah, you. Keith, it's your turn right after the wasps deal their damage. Stay in front of me, at least. Very good. So, where did that put my ah, that's right. Oh, and uh, minor action, I cast Root on Griffin. Okay. So, cr getting crushed by all the... You're getting stung multiple times by all these wasps clearly staggers the lizard until it just kind of gives up and ceases to move. Keith, your turn. Are you just running away? I run away. Very good. That was the first round of the swarm's existence. Hmm. I don't like any of these, but that's what work. Okay. Swarm moves. Okay. So on the next round, the swarm moves towards Keith. Keith, what's your AC? 12? Yeah. They miss. They start stinging at your armor and leather and don't really get very far. Let's get your turn. Um. Hey, Liska, fuck you, I'm leaving as yeah. soon as I get the chance to move again. And I am out of here. And Don't you're move. not concentrating to keep the swarm going? Nope. Alrighty. So it has now been a full two rounds since the swarm came into existence, and since you were no longer concentrating, they vanished back into the ether from whence they came. 
Excellent. Keith, it has been a minute. Oh. Roll a fortitude save. I'm scared. You do not pass the fortitude save. Fuck. 1d2 dexterity damage. Dexterity damage? Yes. So, you're going to lose this much dex, or however much dex. As soon as the potion is cured, your dexterity will return to normal. Man, my dex is my second best of skill. Keith, you lose only one point of dexterity. If you... Uh, manage to pass a fortitude check, you will regain your uh, you'll, you'll regain your dexterity. Okay. Or if you wait for six hours. Uh, let's go. What do you want to do right now? Um. Uh, are these doors locked? Which ones? These ones. Nope. They swing open. Wait, no. I don't want them to swing open. I want him to investigate. Okay. He pokes at the doors and they swing open. Okay. You see more of the same dry hallway, cobwebs cluttered around. See scratch marks demonstrating that lizards were definitely here. Okay. You see two more doors in front of you and the hallway down further on to your left. What are you doing? I'll go here. You see a lizard along with more hall. So this hall seems less well maintained. There's clearly dust and debris and dirt laying around. You're not sure what the cause is, though. Perhaps it's lizards. Right next to me. I think you know what my next move is. You gonna try to burn the lizard? Burn the lizard. Okay. Have you seen? Uh, no. The lizard gnarls. <laughs> but is clearly unaffected. It swipes in the general direction of, of your servant. Does it succeed in hitting it? Uh, I don't know. What is your servant's AC? That's a good question. If it is eight or less, then yes, he hits. Oh, crap. It can only exert 20 pounds of force. Oops. Oh, well, squashing a lizard at the table was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, yes, it automatically hits. Alrighty then. How much does it take? Two damage. Two damage. Cool, it can survive that. Alright, I sneak him back here. Alright. And I shall come up. Yeah, actually, Keith, go get him. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going in there. I'm only five health. On the bright side, oh, yeah. you can't get any more poisoned. Didn't you help? You healed up over nine. Did where? How did you get down to five health again? So you should be up at like points of damage in the past couple minutes. Okay, you're right. From the lizards. I thought only one hit you though, and he only hit you for like four damage or something. 
Uh, no, no, I got hit again. I think. No, just the one lizard hit you. I don't know. I ended up taking like six points of damage in the end. Okay. Well, your move. Uh, crap. I go in and I stab at the. Alrighty, roll for it. Oh, that's where you got your other damage. Oh, yeah. You raise. Point. You're right. Yes, yeah, so you raise your sword as to smite the lizard in two. However, you overextend yourself and fall oh. over backwards. You're now prone. Oh, crap. It's the lizard's turn. The lizard attacks. No! 16. Beats your AC. Two damage. Oh, I'm coming to marginally help. <laughs> I got three health left. All right, I cast um, the swarm is the one that I can actually control, right? No, you can't control either one of them. This, no, the plague is just several swarms. All right. Why do I get multiple plagues, but only one swarm? Well, no, that's how many charges it takes to cast each one. Oh, how many charges do I have? Uh, you have six charges. And... Except you've used one, so now you're down to five. I was misled on the, uh, okay. Sorry. I cast swarm on it! No, wait, magic missile. I will use the last magic missile. Alright, very good. Roll for damage. One for damage. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to add the plus one. Just add one to that. Yep. 11 uh, minus 3 equals 8. Alright. Alrighty. So... Keith, your turn. If you stand up, that'll provoke an attack of opportunity. Uh, can I swing my sword or stab at the lizard while I'm prone? Um, can you attack when prone? Prone. Very good. Characters lying on the ground. A prone attacker has a minus four penalty on melee attack rolls and cannot use a ranged weapon except for a crossbow. Prone defender gains a plus four bonus to all class against range attack. It takes minus four penalty to AC against melee attacks. Standing up is a move equivalent action that provokes an attack of opportunity. So yes, but you'll take a minus four uh, on your chance to hit. Let's see. Either stand. I'm, I'm screwed either way. You could just crawl away. Well, except there's people in the hallway. Exactly. But it's a little bit wider than a square, so you can kind of nudge your way past them. I'm doing that. All right. And I can I stand up or no? Um, do only move five feet? Sure, you can stand up. All right, Lizard's turn. Lizard tries to move here. What happens when the lizard moves on top of the invisible serpent? Liska. Yeah? What happens when the lizard tries to move on top of the invisible servant? Does he just like run into him? He can't or? move unless he pushes it. Okay. Uh, I'll go 
of loser. So feeling the force, it attacks at the where it can tell there must be something. Is that an automatic hit? It is. Okay. Three damage. Three damage. It can survive exactly one, mm, no more attacks. Alrighty. Not dead Iska, yet. Your move. Yeah. Mm. Swarm and then run. Alrighty. I'm assuming you want it directly on top of the lizard? Yep. Very good. So, <coughs> Swarm surrounds the lizard and begins stinging at it. <laughs> That's epic. You can see the lizard be just torn apart by these insects. Just, you know, ripped to shreds, like flesh is falling off of it and it just kind of collapsed, skeletized. It's, it's dead. Very dead. Keith, your move. Uh, well, I'm just going to stay right here. Okay. Uh, in that case, the swarm oh. moves to you. For its. I thought you were going to get rid of the swarm, Liska. The swarm always lasts for two rounds plus concentration. So if Liska concentrates, he can make it last longer, but it's always going to last for a minimum of two rounds. God dang it. Okay. Swarm moves to attack you, it fails. Again, just kind of stingers get stuck in your armor and nothing really happens. Aren't you glad I've decided to help now, Keith? <laughs> you suck. Okay, let's go. You're the one who wanted me to help. It's not my fault that everything I cast turns to evil. It doesn't turn to evil, it just attacks whatever is close. That's true. Mm -hmm. Just a mindless swarm. Anyways. It is now your turn. The swarm has dissipated. Your move. Mine? Uh, yeah, sure. If you want to, you can move. I'm getting away from here. Alrighty. Very good. Liska. Yeah. What are you doing now? You can see that the hallway still extends further. And there's obviously an offshoot. There's some doors a little bit further down. Well, I'll uh, I'll move him to investigate. Okay. You can see that there's definitely two hallways that branch off and then something yep. further there. You found another lizard. I found another lizard. Keith, go take care of it. <laughs> really? Well, okay, what do you want to do, smart guy? I want my character to rest. Fine, we rest for 24 hours and then find a lizard. Okay. Does it help my health heal up at all? Yes. Do you have any healing spells or potions? Either nope. one of you? Nope. Of course not. Alrighty. Keith. No, for 24 like hours ration, of rest. Right? What? That takes up a ration, right? Uh, Yeah, you gotta eat for the day. Okay. And then you ate one ration coming over here. So... Both of you lose two rations for all your travel so far. And Keith, you're restored to full health. And, alcohol. <laughs> and Liska, you also are full health. I have an idea. Alrighty. Alright. I'm going to bring him back here. And I'm going to give him... Uh, Wait, no, he can't carry things, only hold them. 
There was a torch next to the lizard. <laughs> huh? There was a torch next yeah, to the lizard. Know. I was going to have some of that alcohol uh, we picked up, combine it with the torch, and, well, you see where I'm going with this, right? Yes, though you should notice that while it is indeed a expensive brew, or distilled, how, what is that? Whatever. It's expensive, it's hard liquor, but it still isn't more than 20% alcohol. Well, maybe 25, possibly 30 for one of the more expensive ones. No, no, this is going to... That's going to be kind of uh, one of your weaker rums, vodkas, etc. Or one of your really high needs. It's it's still it's still flammable as long as I pour it on the lizard and then set it, and then put the torch to it. You well, okay, have so of, you have to have a certain percentage of alcohol for it to be flammable. Though. Yeah, well, okay, so the alcohol though will evaporate faster, so there could be kind of a vapor cloud around the lizard that could ignite. That yeah, but it like doesn't matter. Really opportunities for the lizard to bite you. It doesn't matter though, since he can't carry. You can only grab and toss and stuff like that. Alrighty, so you're going to try to ignite the lizard again? Yep, just ignition. Okay. You succeed. The lizard screams in pain and takes some hefty damage. But not enough to be bloodied. I see. Keith, go take care of it. Okay. Whoa, oops. Can I stand, like, right here? Uh, if you do that, you'll provoke an attack of opportunity as you walk past the lizard. Well, it would be best... No, you won't. It's just sitting in a bracket on the wall. Okay. Well, I can now it's kind of next to the lizard. Since it was it. sort of put there. Alrighty. Roll for it. Eleven plus four. Hit. It damage. Do you stab the lizard through the heart? It gurgles and dies. Yeah. Okay, now what? Um, let's go. What do I do? Uh, I could run in there and shoot a plague at it. If you think that would help. The lizard is dead. Oh. I could run in and shoot a plague at it. If you think that would help. Right. But in any case, I'll just send uh, Griff to, to investigate a little more. Okay. Come back here with me. Uh, you find the door to be locked. What? Locked? No. Okay, this door... Okay, up this hallway then. Alrighty. Yep. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Do you have a lockpick skill, Liska? Uh, is there a lockpick skill? Uh, you're thinking of the sleight of hand skill in Pathfinder. Oh. Oh. Well, let's find out what it is. That would be dexterity based, if I'm correct, right? Uh, yeah, probably. I got zero. I, I got have zero in that. Dexterity, I know that. All right. Well, it's a minus one right now, but it's still the best. Okay. Let's see. Yes, your sleight of hand 
right now is at two. It is indeed a deck skill. So, yeah, you could definitely do some stuff that if you felt like it. I attempted. To what are you trying to pick? Uh, which door we want to go after Liska? Um, you, you trying to pick the door? Yeah. Well, wait, hold on, man. Let's go get this treasure first. Well, just wondering, do I do I have enough to unlock the door? Uh, no, you failed to unlock the door. Okay, now just go. Oops. Now let's go ahead and get the uh. One minute. Okay, so you see there are two chests and a tunnel that was clearly not connecting these two rooms that was clearly not part of the original construction. You're not sure uh, where it came from, though. So, there are these two chests sitting there in front of you. Would you like to try to pick them or break into them? Or? Uh, Liska, can you check for magic? Is he in the bathroom? Um, I'm not sure. I think he went to the bathroom, yeah. I want to check for like magic or something to make sure they're not trapped. Alrighty. Do you want to try rolling a perception or? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do that. So I had okay. no say traps and I want to have him look for magic. Alrighty. You don't perceive any traps. Let's go check for magic. Okay, I use detect magic. You detect no magic. I at detect least, no magic, Keith. Well, at least not, yeah, what's that, 60 feet? Wait, Hold is that on, a 60 foot radius? I don't know, let me check. Mm -hmm. How do you want to open them? 60 feet. Alrighty, so you can detect magic emanating from inside the chest that is in front of Keith, but clearly not cast upon the chest itself. Keith, there's magic inside the chest. It's probably an item or some kind that's been affected. That or a bomb. Well, here, why don't you come over here and dispel magic? I don't have dispel magic. Hmm, I don't know if I want to open it or not. Okay, can you just unlock it and then I can send in my boy to do it? Uh, to actually do the opening. What was switch? You could. Open? You could try just breaking the lock. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Uh. Slide of hand. I'll try a picking clock first. Alrighty. You fail. Ah, crap. Well, guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Was that just a brute strength check? That was, uh, yeah, you can also do just a regular strength check. So it'll be d20 plus your strength mod. I will say this, that you got close to picking that chest. <laughs> you swing the butt of your sword against the lock and the old rusty thing has, has no chance it kind of falls apart just lays on the floor <laughs> nice uh, I'm gonna step to the side I'm gonna let your guy take care of it let's go hey yeah How'd you do? Well, I don't have a deck, but... I 
It doesn't matter though. I'm in the middle of Pathfinder right now. A different nerd thing. They play magic. Yeah, they're playing magic. So what's going on? I didn't hear. Okay, so Keith broke the lock. It's now just is just sitting there. It's just sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have your guy open it. Okay, I have him open it. What's inside? Just swings open. Nothing happens. You can move forward and investigate now if you want to. Right? Can your servants look around and tell you what's inside? Uh, yeah. I sees a pile of coins and a bag. All right, let's take it. Keith, take it. I take it. Wait, what's in the bag? Keith. Well, you can look inside if you want to. I look in the bag. You see it to be an empty bag, though it does strike you as being kind of an unusual bag. Can I check to see if it's like a bag of holding or something like that? Uh, you can certainly check to see if it is. That would be a knowledge arcana check, or you could just start shoving stuff into it and see if it can hold it all. I don't want to risk losing anything. Let's go check to see if it's like a bag, bag of holding. <laughs> okay, detect magic. You can tell that the bag is indeed magical. Keith, that's all it does. It just says if it's magic or not. You want to do an Arcana check, so probably too. Yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll uh, do an Arcana check. Alrighty. Roll it. All right, again. Right. Hey, twenty-four. Nice. You can tell that it is indeed a bag of holding. Yes. All right, got a bag of holding. It's worth noting, though, putting sharp objects inside may be inadvisable. Seeing as it, this bag is made out of a soft leather, anything sharp that were to pierce the edge would cause it to lose all of its magic and possibly result in all kinds of problems for whoever was in the vicinity at the time of the puncture. Oh, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty bad idea to do that. So no weapons of any kind. Well, you can throw weapons in there. Just put them in a sheath first. Oh, yeah. Or wrap them up in cloth or whatever. Mm. Just be safe, though. No weapons. Alrighty. So, you found 50 gold pieces, 30 silver pieces, and 20 copper pieces. Uh, do you want to split evenly, Leska? Uh, yeah, sure. So how much do each of us get? Okay, so that means each of you get 25 gold, each of you get 15 silver, and each of you get 10 copper. Okay, 22. How much copper? Uh, 10. Nice. Okay. That's a decent amount of money. All right. Do you want to try to open the other chest now? Yeah. Go do it, Keith. Or wait, did he already unlock it? Uh, no. He just broke the lock off of the first chest. He hasn't done anything the next one. When you were standing in front okay, of Okay, Keith, unlock it. Uh, okay, I try picking the lock. Roll it. Did you roll? Uh, try reclicking it again. There we go. Congratulations. Well, perhaps not raised as a thief, you were certainly not untalented. The lock springs open as you try to manipulate it. Nice. 
I open the chest. Inside, you see ten potions. Well, you see thirteen potions and two daggers. Three of them are clearly different from the rest. Can I identify them? Uh, you may try to identify them. Okay. Hmm, what check would that be? Like, out of perception, maybe? Sure, go with perception. Like, can we perceive, like, what the, uh... Chemicals look like, or something like that. Yeah, or like you can look at the labels and try to figure out what they mean. Oh, they have labels on it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so okay, so the three kind of green-looking potions have a skull inside of a circle that has been crossed out. The other ten have a simple uh, heart. I rolled a 19. Very good. So looking at this, you suspect strongly that the potions that have a heart on them probably are some kind of a potion of healing or cure light wounds. And that the potions with the crossed out skull are almost certainly some sort of antidote. Um... I still don't know if I trust it. <laughs> But um, I was thinking about drinking one of the skull potions to heal my. Uh... It only lasts for six hours. You're back to normal. Oh yeah. So um, let's go. You just want to split them evenly. I guess. All right. And I'll so take, each. I'll take the extra um. Antidote potion since I'm always up in front of everything. Okay, both of you get five of these potions with hearts. Both of you get one dagger, and then let's go, you get one of the antidotes. You get one of the what? You get one of the antidotes. Alright, I'll take both of them. Both of what? The antidotes. There are three antidotes. Keith took two. You get one. Um, and then you get five uh, potions of cure light wounds. Which do one of D what? potion of cure light wounds? It does one d eight plus yeah. three points of healing. Five. All right. So. Oh. Okay. All right. Now what do you do? You can see there are still two doors you haven't managed to go through yet. Well, I already know I failed to pick that one door. Yep. Is the other door unlocked? To this the right? one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's unlocked. Let's go. You want to send your guy through it? Uh, yeah. Kino says hi. Hi, Kino. Okay, so I sent him through the door. Go. Go. Uh, he's over here. Oh, whoops. I moved. <laughs> moved me. Yeah, all right, he's there. Okay. You can see more of the same dusty hallway. Yeah. It's always the same damn hallway. <laughs> okay, keep looking. Okay. 
Keep looking. Oh, another chest. I had to try to open it. It bites Is it you. Locked? It bites me? Yes, it bites you. It's a How much damage? Uh, let's see. You can only take one more damage, I thought. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so let's see. So where is my first damage on this guy? Special attacks. But I want to see okay. how much damage it can inflict. Well, let's see, I thought if we want to rumble. It can only take one more hit, but I want to see what damage it outputs. Okay, here we go. In this case, it does... Three damage. Three damage? Okay, that kills Plus it. Plus six adhesive. Adhesive? Wait, what? Yeah. It got glue on it and that it's being constantly damaged? It just kind of like... Mimic exudes a thick slime that acts as a powerful adhesive holding fast any creatures or items that touch it. An adhesive-covered mimic automatically grapples any creature it hits with its slam attack. Opponents so grappled cannot get free while the mimic is alive without removing the adhesive first. Open okay, it. well, my thing's dead, so I'll just summon him again. We can only do this two more times. Alrighty. Alright, I send him to scout. Wait, hold on. Actually, I not <clears throat> I have him knock down the torch in this room filled with flammable objects. Okay. The small fire begins to crackle around the room. And I'm out. All right. And look around. All right. Trading post? Play a favor. So many kills. <laughs> I'll play after this uh, after this game's finished. We usually quit around midnight. Okay, what's HP? Just using astral projection to scope out a ruin so I can send Keith in to hit it to death with a sword anyway. That's essentially our strategy. <laughs> that would be my uh, astral projection. Technically, it's not an astral projection. It's an invisible servant. I just use it that way. But anyway, I keep looking around. Just keep assuming that when I move it, I'm looking around. Okay. Okay. Moving in. And there's a lizard. Of course there's a lizard. Well, I, I will uh, knock this down into the uh, flammable material as well. Again, a little crackling begins. Okay. And I move him here. One sec. Let me find some fire. No, I don't want a fire engine. I want fire. Jeez, search engines can be so helpful sometimes. Ah, uh, fire. Alrighty. Hey, I found it. Oh, well, the initiative tracker that is. What's going on now? I found the initiative tracker. Anyways. Okay. You can now see kind of into the room there. 
your move. All right. Yeah, move. Is that a dragon with a sword? Um, that would be a nature check or a dungeoneering check. To see if it's a dragon with a sword or not? Nature check it is. It's not a dragon, if that's what you're wondering. Or if it is, it's a very small one. And no, that's not a sword it's holding. It's a, more of a halberd. Fourteen for nature. Nine for dungeoneering. Alrighty. You aren't really sure what on earth it could be, be, be based off of the dungeoneering check. But your nature strongly suggests that this might be a lizard person, or sometimes referred to as lizard folk. Not always lizard hostile. Folk, huh? Yeah, not always hostile, but who knows about this one? Okay, well, I knocked down both the torches in the room. Okay, then. All right. Fire starts to spread. Speaking of which, from uh, behind you, where you first were knocking torches over, you were hearing sounds of discomfort and screeching. What? I said behind you where you knocked over the, uh, yeah, still here. So I said behind you where you uh, were knocking over towards earlier, you hear the sounds of uh, screeching and discomfort. Okay. Your move. Well, uh, I've got nothing. What do you want to do, Keith? I've already set everything on fire. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> I don't want in there at all. So, uh, check the other door. Yeah, are you telling me you don't want to fight lizard folk and mimics? No, I don't want to fight that. I already don't like that adhesive ability. Fight it, Keith, just because there's fire everywhere, and I'll probably cast a plague again. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, it is worth noting that uh, the creatures have been somewhat injured from the fire. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to go down there. Alrighty. Guys, don't even want to like cast swarm or something and see what happens. That might what? be a good idea. You don't even want to like throw plagues and swarms and things down there and just keep concentrating on it for a while and see what happens. Yeah, that could work. Okay, I'll stand here, cast it here. That's within my line of sight. Yep, that is. Okay, that's good. Within range of the spell. All, All right. right, go. You know what? I'll send out a play this time. That will be the equivalent of one swarm, except it costs three charges instead of one charge. Wait, what? I thought I got three swarms. You do as soon as you hit next level. Oh, okay. Uh, I just cast one swarm then. All righty. 
right here. Concentrating. Keep All right. going. So it's good for three rounds now, uh, as All long right. as you keep concentrating. It adds one more round to. Okay, cool. I'm going to start tracking. Keep concentrating. Oh, and uh, I move him down here and root him. All right. So the swarm gathers around the mimic and starts stinging it relentlessly. All right. Kick some ass, swarm. It does no damage this round. So you do notice that a few of the insects start to stick to the mimic. Do you want to continue waiting? Uh, yeah, I'll just keep doing this. Alrighty, so next round. You're still concentrating? Yep. Good. Man, I swore. The swarm again fails to do any damage to the mimic. Same thing? Keith? What? Same thing? Do you want to just sit there? Do you want to move in, get involved, or just hang back? Okay. So, Liska, another round has passed. The swarm did no damage. Do you want to keep concentrating? Yes. Alrighty. Success. The swarm does damage. How much damage? We are about to find out. Alrighty. Does the swarm attack the little dude at all? Uh, what, the invisible one? Yeah. They can't see him. Oh. The mimic starts to move, trying to get free from the swarm. Do you continue concentrating? Yes. Okay. Again, we got a hit. Ooh, it's nice damage that time. Okay. The mimic is now enraged. You can hear it kind of screeching and gurgling as it continues to move, trying to get free of the swarm. You continue concentrating. I do. Ooh, swarm fails to do any damage this round. Okay. Your move. Do you still keep concentrating? Of course. Okay. Do you want to try to run away from the mimic as it is moving? Mm, yes. There it is. Swarm fails to do any damage. Do you okay. continue to concentrate? I, I do. Alrighty. Swarm hits. Does damage. Screaming in pain, that mimic moves on. Do you continue concentrating? Uh, yeah. And I uh, get here behind Keith, too. Okay. Swarm hits. Your move? Do you continue concentrating? Do you continue concentrating? Yep. All right. It. 
The mimic is very clearly bloodied at this point in time. It's very much on its last legs. All right. Do you continue concentrating? I do. Keith, are you sure you still don't want to get me involved? No. All righty. I can keep this up all day. I don't have to get involved with this. Okay, swarm hits. Do you continue concentrating? Let's go. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, I, I take. I continue concentrating. Critical 12. Alrighty. The mimic dies. Okay, I keep concentrating until it hits the lizard or the drain or the lizard man. Uh, okay, fine. So the swarm heads on over and attacks the lizard. Yeah. Okay, it misses. I'm assuming you're just going to keep concentrating until it dies? Yeah, basically. Or until it gets uh, close enough to me and starts attacking one of us. Okay, fine. Well, in that case, the lizard... The lizard and the lizard guy end up dead, and you can wait two rounds. Okay. Just to expedite things a little bit there, I don't want to sit there and be like, are you still concentrating for a million and a half dice rolls for yeah, everything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that could get old after a while. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go. Very good. Do you wish to investigate any of the corpses? Uh, Keith, you do it. That's what you're there for. Grunt Is work. Gone? Yes, it's dissipated. Okay. I'll yeah, it, don't worry. I've been like, concentrating. Yeah. I checked the mimic. Hmm. I thought I made notes on this. Oh well. Uh, maybe I'll notes over here. Okay. Inside of the slime, you see a few gold pieces, about ten, and a book. It's bound in some kind of flesh. You're not sure what exactly. It seems to be a much smoother flesh than what you'd normally find on. Uh, you know, cowhide books or something like that. So, whatever creature came from, you're not sure. But it seems like a very dark book. Let's go, There's you know, a kind of an essence of evil around it. Let's go. I get the book to you. Cool. <laughs> Detect magic. By the way, we want to split the gold pieces. Uh, yeah, sure. What did I say? Ten gold pieces each? Sure. So. I don't remember now. But five I think it was ten gold pieces. Yeah, five each. Okay. So, yeah, so let's get you cast attack magic on it, and you can tell that there is a very powerful magic magical influence over it that is in some way flawed. Okay, uh, knowledge arcana check. Okay. 19. You are suspicious that this book may have been written by a very twisted sorcerer and then added onto by many others. History you can check. Eight history? Ten. Okay. Yep. The only know book... the names of the sorcerers. Okay, know the names of the sorcerers. Yep. See the names of the sorcerer. Okay. 
No, not that one. Oh. Uh, crud. Brad? No, that is not the name of the mage who wrote the book. This is kind of an obscure minor artifact. Ah. Drool. The Gruel was the one who penned this. So you can tell that this is a copy of his work and not the original. Do you get that? This guy. Yeah. The gruel? The gruel? Yep. What about it? That's the name of the sorcerer. You can oh, tell the book's a the copy. Gruel. The gruel. Okay, I thought you were saying the gruel. Nope. Not gruel. N H A G R U U L. Okay. And history check to see who those are, who that is. Okay. Four. You have this sense that he wasn't a great guy, but you're <laughs> not really sure what he did that was so less than great. Okay. Um, I'm just about done. Anything further? Or do you want to return to the wizard? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Kate, you got anything? No. All right. Let's see. Made a whole bunch of maps. Which one are we on? Yeah, there we go. Okay, you return climbing up the ladder to end up in the wizard's room where he's still mumbling about spells and trying to reanimate his cadaver. So, I see you're back from my basement. Did you find anything of interest down there? A lot of stuff trying to kill us. Yes, uh, I was afraid it wasn't exactly hospitable anymore, which is why I asked you to clean it out. I assume you were successful and everything is gone. What would you say, Liska? What would I say about what? I don't know, saying everything's either gone or toasty. Yeah, basically. Excellent. For your troubles, you can keep that liquor of mine. And I might even throw another, say, 50 gold pieces your way. Nice. Sounds good to me. 50 each? No, 50 to split between the two of you. It was expensive liquor. Enjoy it, though. You've earned it. And I suppose I owe you my heartfelt thanks. Maybe it's mindfelt. I try to avoid getting my emotions involved in too much. There's this girl once. You don't want to hear about her. 
So, will you leave me now to my studies, or is there something further you wish of me? Uh, I got nothing else to ask him or talk to him about. Liska? Uh, I'm good. Alrighty. Want to call tonight, then? Yeah. Cool. We shall pick back up later. Oh, did you see the post I made on Obsidian Portal? Or about Obsidian Portal? I'm trying to get the campaign more or less updated over there. Oh, cool. Hopefully I'll get more of that done tomorrow. Just kind of so what all's happened so far. So. All right. Okay, so if you go to the homepage for this campaign, like so app uh, roll twenty dot net. Yeah. Uh, and then the change wins campaign. Just uh, click on the title, and then underneath it, you can see uh, recent campaign discussions, and then one for Obsidian Portal. Oh, I see it. And then yeah, there you go, the link. So I need to figure out how to change the name because I was just kind of messing around when I made the template. What made you want to name the campaign Change Wins? If you didn't notice, there was a lot of changes occurring after you dropped an orb. Realistically, it would have happened no matter what. I kind of made you drop the orb, but anyways. Because that was kind of the point. If you recall, you were starting to hear rumors about, you know, various things that used to be ordinary, generally old and broken down things being, you know, transformed or changed into similar items with uh, some sort of magical properties. Some of them beneficial, some of them not so much. So clearly whatever has occurred here has been some kind of huge change. Though you did notice that the orange, you know, flame-like thing that was engulfing the stuff didn't act like actual fire. It just kind of glowed, and then things shifted. Yeah. Then you can learn more. Could there's some ways more about that could be learned, but. Only if the right or wrong course of action is taken, depending on how you want to look at it. This is pretty cool. Well, I try. So, what do you think so far? My terrible GM, worst ever? No, oh, you're good. Actually, this is pretty awesome, man. For a uh, online digital tabletop experience, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Eh, I'm doing what I can. Though I must have been, I'm making up half of it like an hour or five before I actually get around to doing it. So, <laughs> well, no, I did make some notes about the overarching story, sort of, and some of the principles at work, so I don't get too messed up and astray. But yeah. Hey, if you're a master of bullshitting, you can easily be a decent DM. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's one way to look at it. Uh, see you next week then? Yeah. Cool. Good night. Night, mate. Hey.